Hey guys, I am excited to join you guys today to talk about mental toughness. Uh, but before I do, I wanted to thank you all for being members of this group. I think this has been a great way for us to stay connected and stay sane during this quarantine. Uh, we're all in this together and I hope we can continue to use this group as a forum to talk about catching, uh, introduce drills to each other. Um, if anyone's looking for a catcher, this would be a great place to find it. And you can always go back and watch these videos and do workouts again. They're great examples of practice plans and, and ways to work out to keep yourself in shape as a catcher no matter what season it is. Uh, a lot of these drills I use during the season myself uh, and especially sometimes between, I'm sorry, before games to make sure that I'm totally loose and that my skills are sharp going into the game and that helps breed confidence in me, which is exactly what I want to talk about today. There was some good questions uh, listed below and I'd like to answer them now. Jamie's going to read them to me. All right, first up, um, Seamus Moylan was talking about receiving credit as a catcher and how you don't normally receive credit. It m usually goes to the pitcher. How do you take that, especially for a whole season, and find the confidence in yourself to know that what you're doing matters? Uh, that's a great point. And this is something um, that all catchers are going to deal with. Um, it's kind of like w w an umpire. You don't notice when an umpire does a great job. You only notice when they screw up. And a lot of times with catching, what you do isn't noticed if you're being successful because if you're catching every ball like you should and you're stealing pitches and you're being subtle about it like you should be, nobody's going to notice except for maybe other catchers or scouts that really know what they're looking at. So you have to understand that the team's success is your success. The pitcher's success is your success also. And you just have to know when you've done a good job and give yourself credit. Um, one thing that I was, when I was in the major leagues, I don't remember if it was um, with the Reds last year or maybe it was when I was with the Braves but my first game catching for the team the manager said in the media afterwards the greatest compliment that I can give Ryan is that I didn't notice him back there because that means that I was just part of the team I was doing my job exactly like I was supposed to and unless you really throw a runner out or there's a play at the plate you're not supposed to be noticed do your job feel confident in what you do and take success with the pitcher success and the team success all right, next question from Donnie Jones. Um, still trying to get my grandson, who is 11, to trust the equipment. Uh, the equipment. He's usually a tough little guy. Any advice on trusting the equipment would be great. That that is tough when you're when you're young. Uh, the biggest thing I could say is repetition. You, your body gets used to it as you do it more. Um, put him in a position where he's protected. He's totally in blocking form and he's safe and really throw balls at him. Uh, prove it to him that it's gonna, it's not gonna hurt if it uses the equipment properly. Uh, and maybe try to explain that if he, go, if he turns to the side, he's exposing himself more. Um, I think that's a repetition thing, but it's very human, it's very natural to flinch when things are flying at you. Uh, so don't give him too hard a time, just tr try to help him work through that. Sean Gakel asked, uh, my daughter is a good catcher, but lacks the field general aspect. She's almost silent back there. How important is it for the catcher to be a vocal leader? Uh, this is something that I, I get a question about a lot and that uh, young players especially have a really hard time feeling like they should be leaders or feeling confident in being a leader. Uh, and that's something that I dealt with for a long time too, even all the way through college where people had been telling me, you're the leader, you're tall, you're strong, uh, you're in the position to be a leader, so be a leader. But a lot of times, leadership comes with experience, and leadership comes from having been there and done that. And especially young players, they haven't really been there, and they haven't really done that. One thing that I've had success in teaching um, young players how to be leaders is one, demonstrating um, easily repeatable vocal cues that they can use. So what I've started doing in my catching lessons every once in a while is I'll go out on the field, and I will literally have them yell to an empty field Hey, if, if there's a if there's a we're gonna pretend a lefty's hitting right now, tell the pitcher if he hits a ground ball to first base, you have to get over. Hey, ground ball, getting over. And it feels ridiculous on an empty field to be out there yelling at no one, but you practice it. And the first time out, normally the catcher will be like, "Oh, if he hits it over there, go over there," and it and it kind of feels awkward. But then they get the hang of it after three or four reps, and you literally yell to an empty field, or and then you hit you hit the ball over there actually, hit it to no one and you have them yell, hey, get over, get over, remind the pitcher. And one example of this, uh, my friend Larry Raceback here in Colorado, he's a huge Cincinnati Reds fan, and when I was with the Reds last year, he was watching our games, and he said through the TV, through the broadcast, all the way in Colorado, when there was a ground ball to first, he could literally hear me yell, get over. 
through the TV. So that's one easily repeatable vocal cue. And another thing, change your player's perspective of what it means to be a leader. Most kids don't feel comfortable being a leader because they think a leader is, has to be bossy. They have to tell people what to do. If you can reframe what being a leader is into you want to help your teammates be the best they can be. So instead of being bossy, you change it to being helpful. That changes the perspective and it allows kids to feel more comfortable being leaders on their own team. All right, next question from Tanya Williams. My 15 year old catcher is so hard on himself. He cannot reset and move on from mistakes. He's starting a new team. How can we help him mentally prepare to deal with mistakes on the field? Uh, that's a great question. A lot of that comes from um, you just have to be confident in yourself and maintain perspective. If you make a mistake, that mistake doesn't define you. What you do re repeatedly and what you do all the time, that's who you are. Don't self-define with your mistake, with your worst, your worst moment. Uh, remember who you are. Your teammates aren't looking at your one mistake as that being who you are now. Unless you mis make mistakes all the time, all the time, all the time, then you probably need a little bit more practice. But your teammates and the fans and everyone else sees that it, that was just one mistake and they're ready to move on. So you should be ready to move on to remember who you are, remember how good you are, and keep perspective. It's just one mistake. That's okay. Um, why don't you tell them about your Houston game? Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> so this is fun that Jamie likes to bring up. Um, I don't really remember when it was, except for it was August 6th, 2013 in Houston. Um, I tied a major league record for most passed balls in one inning. Most balls that got by me. And uh, after the game, one of the sports uh, writers, one of the media members in Boston, the first question I got asked on TV after the game was, how did it feel to break the record for inadequacy? Um, pretty uh, straight shot to the chest. Well, it was a knuckleballer, and the record that I tied was also two other guys catching knuckleballs, and that's really hard. And I've had, an, uh, you know, nine, I guess, eight seasons in the big leagues over the last nine years. That one inning didn't define me. And actually, later in that game, I ended up getting a game-winning RBI double to help the game. So even though that was, you know, a record that I'll never forget for the rest of my life, that was the worst inning I ever had defensively. And I didn't allow it to define me even for the rest of that game because I ended up, you know, helping the team win. Um... So if I can do that, you can do anything too. Daniel Roach asks, when do, you, um, when do you talk to the pitcher and how serious should you be when you do it? Tell jokes, pep talk, or does it depend on the pitcher? Good question. I would say it always depends on the pitcher and the, the better relationship, the more trust you've built with that pitcher is going to be very helpful. Uh, the biggest thing that I try to remind pitchers uh, sorry, I'll start with the first part. When do I go out there? I try to go out there either when you can feel the momentum is starting to go the other way for the other team and you want to slow down the other team's momentum. Or if the pitcher looks uncomfortable, that's probably a good time to maybe try to help him become more comfortable uh, or her. You know, there's softball players in this group too. Um, or if, if there's something mechanically that you think you can help or you were listening in the bullpen to what the pitching coach was working on your pitcher with and you want to just remind them, this is what you're working on, this is how you can be successful. Most of the time I don't try to do a joke because if I go out there and the pitcher's uncomfortable or pissed off or the momentum's going the, the wrong way, it's the wrong time to laugh. Um, but a lot of times I try to remind them, just like we talked about with the other question, this failure or this momentum going the wrong way doesn't define you, you're great. You're going to be good and, and put it in perspective, help them breathe, slow it down, and restart. And then I like to give them a positive thing to think about or a constructive um, mechanical thing to think about to kind of shift their perspective into the positive and what we want to do and, and away from what was happening and what was negative maybe before. Oh, Jamie is reminding me. Um, <laughs> silently, I have you. She's doing sign language. One other thing I always like to remind the pitcher is that you're in this together. Sometimes the pitching mound can feel like the loneliest place in the world. It feels like you're one against nine on the other team, but really it's nine against one. You and the catcher are in this together, and you have all your, all your buddies, all the defense is all on your side too. Uh, so just remind the pitcher that they're not in this to, by themselves. You're in this together. Um, Stephen Wallace said, my 10-year-old son dislocated his thumb on a tag at home during our last tournament. He wants to know the worst injury you had as a catcher. Ooh, I saw that picture. That looks like uh, the catcher was smaller than the runner that was running by also. That was, that was gnarly. Uh, the worst 
injuries that I've had. I had a collision at the plate my last year of Little League right before I started high school uh, where my foot was angled the wrong way. The kid took a dirty slide and I broke both bones in my ankle at the growth plate and I was in a cast for three months uh, to make sure that my all the way up to my hip to make sure that my legs would still grow the same length after that injury so that was pretty brutal. Um, I've had concussions uh, both from foul tips and from plays at the plate where, where the runner smashed into me. Um, I broke my hand with Boston uh, hitting the hamate bone. Um, I dove, I broke my shoulder diving playing over the line, uh, playing home run derby where I was trying to rob a ball. Um, I've had plenty of injuries. The body is miraculous when it comes to healing. Um, trust your doctors and the biggest thing is if you can keep a positive attitude I really think that does affect your healing uh, and try to get you back out there sooner. Karen McMillan says my son who's 10 wants to know how to learn to build trust in his teammates when he throws down to second the second baseman and shortstop um, that they will catch it. He knows they should catch it but is worried they won't and ends up making mistakes in the process. Um, repetition you know Doing it in practice and having the middle infielders actually catch the ball will help you build confidence because success breeds confidence. If you have middle infielders that maybe aren't as good or can't handle your speed that you're throwing with, that's tough at a young age. I know I used to get frustrated um, when I was playing rec ball little league and I was one of the best players in the league and I was playing with other other players that maybe just weren't as good as me and that's okay because everyone that plays, you know, there's a, there's a place to play for everyone in rec ball. A lot of times you have players of different caliber a different talent. I'd say understand what your job is and do your job. And you can't control what other players do and how they do their job. And I know the, the Patriots have been so successful because uh, in football because every, every guy is responsible for his job. And he doesn't try to do other people's jobs because um, then that you're going to be worse at your job. So I would just say you have, you have to learn to trust them um, and you just have to do your job. If you make a good throw, that's all you can do. If they don't catch it, that's their fault, but if you try to do their job for them and you end up making a bad throw, then you're not doing your job. So just do your job. Um, Frank Moore says, my son who is 17 is going to be starting catcher of his team, which plays at the second highest league in Germany. A lot of weight on his shoulders and pressure, but a chance to play better baseball. The mental game is a big part of it. What is your advice for young players to handle tough situations and jumping up to the next level? Um, I think that kind of piggybacks on the last question is do your job and do your job to the best of your ability. And then what I would say, sorry, the neighbor is sawing something. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, what I would say is understand that you're never going to trick anybody. If you're an A or an A minus player or a B plus player, there's nothing you can do to trick everybody long term to think you're an A plus player. So if you're a B plus player, be the best B plus player you can be. And just do your job. Understand that baseball is not a one and done sport. It's it's a consistency sport. And over the long term, you're going to be the person that you can be. You can make improvements by practicing and working really, really hard to improve things. But there's nothing you're going to do in one day that's going to trick somebody into thinking uh, that you're better or worse than what you actually are. So understand who you are and just be that. I've had times where I've tried to be Superman. I've tried to be better than I actually am and it never works out well. Uh, be the player you are and understand Understand, there's no tricking anybody in this game. What about for handling high, particularly high pressure uh, situations? Particularly high pressure situations. Uh, again, I get nervous when I play in the big leagues for the first time in a while or I play in front of a bigger crowd than I'm used to in a while. I understand what it's like to feel pressure. Um, it comes down to trusting yourself and knowing that you could just do as good as you can do and, and whatever you end up doing, you have to accept that that's going to be good enough um, because you are who you are. We're all humans. Sometimes being human sucks, uh, but most of the time being human is awesome. Uh, so take the good with the bad. All right, last question my, uh, from Shay Demons. My son is 11 and up. Um, how do you approach working through times when you are in a slump or struggling such that nothing seems to go right? Uh, good question. Um, a lot of times when things are not going right and we're in a slump, we're so worried about what we're doing that we make it worse. So my best advice, especially for catchers, catcher is the greatest position to be at if you're in a slump because you can make a positive impact on the game even if you're not hitting. So my best advice for if you're in a slump, how to get out of it is make your focus and your effort be 
unselfish. Try to think about making your pitcher better. Try to think about how you can help the team win the game unselfishly and don't worry about your results. As soon as you worry about trying to win the game and help the other team, uh, I'm sorry, the other players on your team, um, your performance will end up being better as a result. So I would say to get out of a slump, be unselfish. Try to help the team win. You should try to do that all the time anyway. Um, but especially when you're in a slump, be unselfish. Help everyone out be, to be better, and, and maybe they'll help you too. I think that's all of the questions for today. Thank you. I'll try to, to do some sort of video like this to keep this group active and keep everyone involved. Um, if you have any questions or videos, keep uh, sending them, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.